Welcome to the C.S. Joseph Podcast. I'm your host, C.S. Joseph. Not like anyone knew that because no one ever does, and I have to consistently repeat myself over and over and over. But I don't mind because that's exactly what everyone is used to from me anyway, on top of like some random tangents. That being said, uh, this is a new lecture series uh, for the premium lectures for journeymen and above member levels. Welcome. Thank you for like keeping the lights on. Uh, the light shining on me right now is paid for by you folks. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. That being said, uh, this is going to be a very different season uh, because this is actually season seven, just like what we have on the YouTube, but this is season seven, part two. Therefore, this is technically season seven, episode 17, okay? And this is the first time that we're going to be talking about Enneagram related content. And having the opportunity to talk about Enneagram, it's something that many of us have been waiting for for a very, very long time. But in order for us and the team here at, uh, uh, or within the, uh, within the uh, CSJ community to actually be able to present to the community our version of the Enneagram, we need to actually lay down the foundation ahead of time that way we're all on the same page we actually understand what is actually going on. A lot of people don't actually realize that the Enneagram itself is based on a combination of Jungian analytical psychology, naturally, but also on a concept known as the seven deadly sins. And the seven deadly sins, which is a very Catholic uh, concept, and for example, in the late sixth century, Pope Gregory the Great reduced the list to seven deadly sins, to seven items, and uh, uh, basically combines a bunch of them. And uh, however, the problem is, is that we find that that is entirely inaccurate. And due to that little inaccuracy, because yes, I'm literally saying that C.S. Joseph disagrees with Pope Gregory the Great at this point, uh, and uh, yeah, I just do. Uh, and I, I totally understand, like, you know, from their perspective, like, why Pope Gregory did what he did to simplify certain things. But also, it was to reduce attack surface against the Catholic Church in terms of the Catholic Church being criticized for certain things. And uh, so, yeah, certain, certain consolidations and concessions were made by Pope Gregory the Great in order to conceal certain things about uh, the church's behavior in the eyes of its parishioners and its subjects, basically, uh, to help secure the political power and uh, the social power of the church itself. These decisions were made. At least that's my theory. And honestly, I'm sticking to it. But... The, the seven deadly sins at a base level is the foundation for the Enneagram and combined with Jungian analytical psychology. However, that has led to an incompleteness of the Enneagram. And this is why I maintain that the Enneagram literally is no different than the Zodiac. The Zodiac is also incomplete. I maintain there's actually 16 signs and not 12 signs. We just can't see the missing four signs because the Earth itself, where it's positioned uh, within the Milky Way galaxy, is actually inside of uh, the other four constellations. And those constellations are way too close for us to actually observe. It's kind of like, you know, when you're actually like looking out of your body with your eyes. It's not like you can turn your eyes around and look at yourself. You just can't. You can't really even perceive the point of origin. Someone else has to perceive the point of origin. This is one of the reasons why humanity has a hard time typing themselves, including myself. I couldn't type myself. I'd have a third party, an onlooker, an observer actually type me because it's actually very difficult for people to know themselves. And it's so hilarious to me how, like, out of all the 16 types, ISTPs are the ones that claim that they know themselves the most when they really actually know themselves the least. It's hilarious. Thank you, SI Critic, for that. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. And yet they're in complete denial that they even are forgetful as well. Thank you for that hilarity as well. I enjoy observing your ISTP hypocrisy, folks. It's my favorite thing in the world. And then, after I enjoy it, I make fun of it and mock it. It's, it's great. Thank, thank you for the ammunition. I, I love it. So, with all that, um, you know, the Zodiac is incomplete, but in the same way or manner that the Zodiac is incomplete, guess what? So also is the Enneagram, because the seven deadly sins is an incomplete model. 
So what we have done is that we've looked into the said seven deadly sins. We actually did a little bit more research to go along with that. And uh, as part of our main disagreement with Pope Gregory the Great, we decided to take vainglory out and put it back so that it is part of the original eight deadly sins before Pope Gregory the Great made his change. And imagine if you're being Pope Gregory the Great and they're selling indulgences to people and it's claiming, hey, if you give money to the church, that means you go to heaven, etc. Uh, yeah, and then the church has all this gold, all these fine clothes, all these uh, idols and icons that they have. That sounds pretty vainglory to me, but if they remove the term vainglory from the collective unconscious of their parishioners and or uh, people, uh, you know, who, who worship uh, under the uh, Catholic flag, as a result of that, you know, with vainglory removed from the list, people can't criticize the church for being vain, right? So it's, it was really, really important to make sure that we added vainglory back. And then in doing so, we finally actually have a complete system for our own interpretation of the Enneagram, which is very, very key. Uh, and if you notice that because of the eight uh, deadly sins, you can actually apply cognitive functions, you can apply uh, types directly to the deadly sins and actually come to a better, more complete understanding of what's actually going on. And this understanding is absolutely critical if you guys, you know, when you guys actually start to use our version of the Enneagram, which will come later, and also to help you understand how the temples actually work and how they interact with one another, that kind of thing. That, that's, that's mega important. But we're kind of just breaking down what we talked about in Season 18, uh, Cognitive Mechanics, about the four temples and actually what makes the temples tick. Because the temples, or the temple theory within Jungian analytical psychology, is absolutely necessary in order to even have a complete understanding of the Enneagram to begin with. But then you have to also understand the temples, and to do that you need to understand specifically the deadly sins, the living virtues, and ultimately the functional virtues of each of the four temples. All of these things matter, okay? And that sounds like a lot of information. Yes, it is. That's why we've dedicated the next nine episodes, including this one. This is the first of nine in terms of Season 7, Part 2, starting with Episode 17. And we're going to be going through uh, nine episodes, including this one, to actually explore those things so that you folks have a better understanding. Not only that, we're also going to be reshooting uh, five episodes in Season 18 as part of live lectures. Live lectures are coming back and uh, for the four temples again so that we're consistent with our message on them that way there's no confusion and the old uh, temple lectures in season 18 they're going to be removed and replaced uh, with this more accurate model now that we've been able to go through our nomenclature our labels and we just and lots of debate months and months of debate uh, between uh, myself chris taylor john bodine robert potts and anyone else who has contributed to this project there's also people on the Discord server that I'd also like to thank uh, for their discussions uh, with uh, Chris Taylor and others relating to the temples. Uh, those discussions have been very helpful, and we've been able to refine the temple theory in a way where it's actually presentable, digestible, it makes sense, and then we're able to go at this level of the deadly sins, and then now, after we have all these this, this huge foundation poured, then guess what? We're going to be applying the temples themselves as a new vector to be utilized in Ucha uh, to help you uh, navigate the type grid. And the next step after that, we're going to be releasing a test that's going to be a companion test alongside Ucha that will be utilized to help you determine your cognitive focus, right? Uh, because you can use the deadly sins uh, to help identify your cognitive focus, and that will be in effect the CSJ community's version of the Enneagram, which would be completely accurate and pretty dope. So we're gonna be adding that to Ucha as well. So this is great because you're gonna get an additional vector with which you'll be able to navigate the type grid and make it more accurate and easier for you to type people. And you're also going to be getting uh, the CSJ community's version of the Enneagram to help you identify via our test people's cognitive focus, including your own. So that's ultimately where we're going with this. But really, in order for us to get there, we need to make sure that we're putting in the work. And that's one of the reasons why we're doing the 
new five episodes to replace the Temple episodes in Season 18 and to continue on uh, with Season 18 from there. Uh, and then we're also going to be adding in these nine episodes to Season 7, Part 2. And Season 7, Part 2 will only be available to Journeymen and Acolyte members uh, here within the Members Portal. They will not be made available publicly. So that's a really big deal. Make sure you guys are just aware of that. That's a thing. Uh, we're not going to be making that available. However, I will say that anytime we're going to be doing additional live lectures and adding to Season 18, we're still going to be sending out the email so people who are on our email list will be able to receive the episode from Season 18 to watch it as well. People who are Journeyman and Acolyte members will be able to watch those episodes live uh, with me when they're presented. And then any new episodes that we add to Season 18, we're going to go back to the very beginning of Season 18 and then so one episode per month. And we have, what, almost a year's worth of Season 18 episodes out. Actually, we have almost two years worth of Season 18 episodes. We're going to be releasing one Season 18 episode a month for the public on YouTube and the podcast. That way, the rest of the audience can catch up. But it's going to be very slow. And, uh, yeah, if obviously, you know, if they're going to want to, like, have it all and be current on everything, they're going to want to be a member. But I think it's really important that Season 18 Cognitive Mechanics is actually made more available to everybody eventually. Yeah, they'll be two years behind, but, you know, eventually they'll have an opportunity to catch up with the rest of the audience because we are starting to notice, like, for example, concepts talked about within the Cognitive Mechanics season of Season 18 uh, they're being talked about regularly on Facebook. They're being talked about regularly on Discord. And we're starting to notice that the audience is kind of having a different split in certain ideas and certain terminologies. And uh, we're trying to make sure that we're keeping the audience healthy by having you all sharing the same terminology. And since Cognitive Mechanics is a season, just basically exists as like, the main primer of all of Jungian analytical psychology all in one place, we feel it's really necessary to make sure that we're going to be making that available to people slowly over time, right? And if people want full access to season 18 in its current form right now, they just become a member, no problem. But we're really going to be giving everyone else an opportunity to do that. That being said, new live lectures, which would be season 18 as well as other seasons, again, will just be made available to members and whoever has their email on the list and they don't lose the live stream link basically. So just adding that additional explanation so that uh, you as uh, our paid members behind the paywall are very aware of what's actually going on. So it's just, you know, hashtag communication. So yeah. But yeah, uh, so I think in effect, that is our little 13 minute introduction. Let's actually talk about the eight deadly sins um, within uh, this introduction for season 17 part 2. This is episode 17 of season uh, 7. Uh, not season 17, I'm sorry. It's season 7, uh, episode 17. So yeah. Uh, so let's list out the deadly sins that are there. There's the deadly sin of lust. There's the deadly sin of gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, envy, pride, and vainglory. And vainglory is that one that uh, Pope Gregory the Great removed in the 6th century and then supposedly like he added it to pride, etc. But it's not really the same thing. They are completely different. Uh, and guess what, folks? The deadly sins are attached to each of the 16 types, or at least the 16 types are attached to deadly sins because two of the 16 types has a primary deadly sin. Now, one of the reasons why we added this to season seven is because obviously we were talking about virtues and vices and those virtues and vices are very a mixture of nature and nurture that would typically occur to each of the 16 types from a very colloquial perspective and that's the first half of season seven that's season seven episodes one through 16 that's what that represents season seven part two is a little bit different uh, we're going even 
deeper. We're going deeper uh, at a deeper level of virtue and vice, but this time we're making it centered around the deadly sins because each of the 16 types has a deadly sin. And deadly sins can be really, really bad, but they can also be really, really good. And we're going to be examining how that is the case in future episodes. Very important, very necessary. Uh, like I said, you know, we can't really come to a real understanding of the Enneagram and how to use the Enneagram, an accurate and accurate Enneagram, to actually determine people's cognitive focus without this. So that's kind of like, in effect, uh, what's going on here, right? So again, just being informative. So, but let's, let's actually, you know, do a little refresher here about why deadly sins are important and what they're attached to. So remember the four temples, okay? So we have the soul temple, we have the heart temple, we have the mind temple, and we have the body temple, the four temples. And each temple has a, what we are going, what we're calling a functional virtue. It's like, um, it's something that uh, each of the temples aspire to, and they can aspire to it in a positive way, and they can aspire to it in a negative way. It is a very um, neutral uh, virtue. It is a neutral virtue that's attached to each of the temples. And the functional virtue of the soul temple is character and developing one's own character or developing the character of other people. It's all about character. And it is the primary temple. You could think of it as like the ego temple for humanity, basically. Uh, it's also very abstract, and uh, which is pretty awesome. And then the other, the next temple, which is the heart temple, that too is an abstract temple as well. And uh, the heart temple, its functional virtue is the virtue of passion, basically. It's all about passion. That can be a good thing. That can be a bad thing as well. We get, uh, us in the heart temple, we can get very passionate about things as you folks are very aware of when it comes to C.S. Joseph losing his mind on a live stream or in front of the camera as, as his head just gets removed from his body and starts floating up into space, spinning rapidly with red and being all red and steam going everywhere, potentially suffocating or choking everyone in the room. Who knows? Uh, you know, and I guess that's kind of why we have, you know, a Harry Potter wand from time to time, although that has been retired, sadly. And uh, I don't know if it's sad, though. Uh, but anyway, uh, it just happens. And sometimes we need to be brought down to earth, and that's why we're explaining the functional virtues in this way. But it's all about passion to the heart temple. And honestly, if I don't have passion in my life, there's no way that I can actually do anything uh, like or even be motivated to do anything in my life without having some kind of passion. Like I have a lot of passion towards my work, a lot of passion towards the people in my life. I take these things very seriously. And if there's no passion, I'm just honestly completely uninterested. Kind of like how STPs, for some reason, can just decide to have sexual relations without any passion, and then they behave like machines in the bedroom, and honestly, it triggers the F out of me. Like, seriously, why? Gross. Like, literally gross. Y'all can enjoy yourselves being boring machines, but uh, us over here in the Heart Temple, we're going to be super mega passionate and actually enjoy ourselves. So, okay, go be mechanical. You, you can go enjoy that. Well, us over here, we're going to be human. Mm, nice. Anyway, uh, so moving on to the mind temple. The functional virtue of the mind temple is ultimately learning, and then that learning can become teaching. Education is very central to the mind temple. It's very important. That's kind of like the direction that it's going. And then there is the body temple, which is in effect if the soul temple is the ego of the four temples according uh, for the purpose of humanity, then the body temple would be the super ego, basically. And its functional virtue is legacy, leaving something behind, um, creating a work of art or a work for them to be known for indefinitely, kind of like how the Great Pyramid of Giza is one such example of body temple legacy uh, here on the earth. You know, the seven wonders of the world, that was also an example of legacy for the body temple, right? And psychologically, this is kind of where we are going and where we're like that, that entire direction, right? 
Now, remember that the temples themselves also have four of the 16 types attached to each temple as part of this uh, sub-introduction, lol. Uh, so the, uh, the character temple, also known as the soul temple, that is uh, ENFP, INFJ, and then uh, ISTJ, ESTP, right? And then my temple, the heart temple, that'd be ENTP, ISFJ, INTJ, ESFP, we are the heart temple. And then there is the mind temple, which is the ESTJ, ISTP, ENFJ, INFP, and then the body temple, which would be ENTJ, ISFP, ESFJ, INTP, in no particular order. So, and if you notice, each of these four sets of the 16 types are actually equivalent to the four sides of the mind. The four sides of the mind, if like you have an ENFJ, well, they're part of the mind temple because they have ISTP, ESTJ, INFP in their head. Same thing for an INFP, they have the same four types in their head. Same thing for an ESTJ, they have the same four types in their head. And same for the ISTP, so all four of those types as egos have all these those three other types within their heads. And that's why they are a part of the mind temple and that's why they are focused so much on learning and teaching and education right it's no different for the body temple entjs isfps esfjs intps they all have these other types within their head within their four sides of the mind therefore they have the same functional virtue of leaving a legacy behind the body temple and that's why they have an interesting relationship with death but more on that later uh, so yeah so you have each of these four types that are attached to the four temples, and each of the four temples have these functional virtues. Character, passion, learning, and legacy, okay? Very important functional virtues, and these virtues can be expressed in positive and negative ways, okay? And when it comes to discussing expression, while that is what happens, why are they expressed in positive and negative ways? And that is basically goes down to the deadly sins versus the living virtues basically at another layer deeper now functional virtue is above deadly sin and living virtue because the functional virtue represents the entire temple itself and uh, what uh, each of the four types attach to that temple are aspiring towards in a positive or negative way okay very important to know that distinction. I just want to make sure that there is a difference between functional virtue and living virtue. Living virtue is at a deeper level and is more attached to a deadly sin. Uh, and is not the same as a functional virtue. And a living virtue is more on the positive side while the deadly sin is more on the negative side. That doesn't, that's not to say that there isn't some yin and yang equilibrium going there where even deadly sins have positive traits and living virtues have negative traits. And we're gonna be discussing each of those traits as well as we get into further episodes down uh, in this uh, lecture series for season seven, part two, episodes 17 and beyond. So yeah, just trying to make sure that you folks understand that there is a very big difference between functional virtue, which is at a high level and representative of the entire temple, and it's both positive and negative. And then looking at the deadly sin level, you have living virtues attached, but that's a bit deeper within the temple itself, okay? Very, very key, all right? So make sure you guys don't forget that. I'm very concerned about the audience forgetting about that because it could lead to some potential confusion and that's what I'm trying to avoid so yeah uh, great we might actually do 10 we might actually do 10 episodes uh, for uh, season 7 part 2 I think we're probably going to be doing another episode as well so we'll get in there but Let's actually go back to the deadly sins and let's actually assign the specific deadly sins uh, and living virtues uh, to each of the 16 types.